welcome once again to explainingcomputers.com. In recent videos, I've fitted both a large fan and a large heatsink to a Raspberry Pi 3. However, I've yet to combine the two, and so in this video, and following several requests, I'm going to continue with my Raspberry Pi 3 cooling experiments. So, here we are with our Raspberry Pi 3, just as you saw it at the end of my last extreme cooling video with its large passive heatsink. Now, the first test I'm going to run is a test that some people have asked me to run, which is the same test as previously, but for longer, to see if it makes a difference if we run it, say, for 20 minutes rather than 10 in terms of the maximum temperature. It'll probably make a little bit of difference. So, if we look at the code, just to remind you, this is how I've been testing out temperatures in these videos, and I'll use this script again for most of my other tests here today. But to remind you what it does, it basically takes a temperature measurement, it then uses sysbench to stress out the Pi's processor cores, all four of them on the Pi 3, for about two minutes using a sysbench routine that actually factors prime numbers. It then takes another temperature measurement and repeats that to give us our 10 minutes with a measurements every two minutes start and end. Now, to run this for a longer period of time, I could, of course, just take that piece of code, drop it um, down here, and then run that. But this is getting rather messy. It's not very elegant code, as some of you have pointed out. So rather than that, I will not use that. I won't save that. I'll open up a separate piece of code, which does the same thing in a more professional fashion. So here again, it's a bash script. It'll clear the screen. It'll now then run a loop for variable in range, for f in range 1 to 10. It'll then take our measurement, run sysbench, and then a final measurement on the end. So let's see what that will do for the Pi. So I'll go over here. I've called it loopy long test sh, all ready to run, and we'll run the test. And there we are. It starts at an idle of a 32.7 degrees centigrade. We'll see what it ends up at after a whole 20 minutes. And there we are, it's finished. And as you can see, after 20 minutes, the Pi got up to 49.9 with its uh, passive heatsink. It would have got to a 47.2 had we stopped after our 10 minute test. Now, I think that's actually not too bad for the 10 minute test. It proves it clearly isn't getting to its maximum. It might even, I guess, go more than 49.9 if we ran this for half an hour or an hour or something like that. But it does suggest to me that actually the 10 minute test gives you a pretty reasonable indication of just about where the Pi will get to in terms of temperature. And as I've used the 10 minute test in my previous test, I think I'll continue to use it for the rest of the test in this video. But yes, those of you who say if you run it for longer, it gets slightly warmer, it clearly does. Right, the next thing I'm going to do is to take our Pi with the large heatsink on top of it and to mount a fan on top of that. Now, in a previous video, I've mounted a fan a bit like this on the Pi. I've had a fan just like this, one of these old JNC fans, and that worked very well. Uh, it's a bit more difficult to mount that here because under here, it's only got three pieces of plastic and actually they would catch on the fin. So I need some sort of mounting thing to make that work. Now, I was working towards that, but then I discovered in my bits box this thing, this is a little uh, fan from, I think, an old graphics card, maybe an old motherboard, but I think probably a, a graphics card, a little uh, Gigabyte P4 Titan fan, suggests something to do with a Pentium 4. And I've noticed by pure coincidence, this will fit on top of here quite nicely. Uh, it has these screws. I'm sure it once had four of them, it's now got three, but they sort of poke in to the edges, and that actually fits on quite well by, by pure fluke. That's quite a nicely... Uh, uh, fitted on fan there. I don't think I'm going to better that. So that at the moment is powered by a Molex connector and given that I didn't actually leave holes in my Perspex here to actually get to the GPIO pins, I hope you'll excuse me for powering that fan, not from the Pi itself, which clearly could happen if we had a smaller uh, uh, 5 volt fan on top of the Pi there. I'm actually going to power it via a adapter. I've showed you this adapter previously. Where's it gone? There, there it is. This is normally used to power IDE drives, but it has a Molex connector on the end here. So if I connect in the Molex connector, it'll go in something like that. In theory, that'll give us a little fan working on top of the, the heat sink. Let's give it a little whirl. If I can just get the right things turned on, it'll hopefully 
work, you might have heard it to power up then. So there we ha have a fan, not perfectly mounted, but reasonably mounted. So let's try that out in terms of cooling on our Pi 3. Right, here we are with a test you all wanted me to run at the end of the last video. We've now got the Pi with its fan on top of the extreme passive cooling solution, no longer an extreme passive cooling solution. And I'm going to run the test we've been running in all the previous videos are a 10 minute test. So let's start that off. And um, already we can see some result. We're starting here from an idle temperature with the fan on top of 30.0 compared to a 32.7 for just a heatsink by itself. So let's see how it does over 10 minutes. And there we are, it's finished. And I don't have to tell you, but clearly this has been rather successful. Adding on a fan is dropping off a considerable temperature. If we compare that to the uh, passive heat sink alone, you can see we've clearly knocked off uh, a good 10 degrees. And uh, even more impressive if we compare that to having no cooling at all on the Pi, as I did in a video a while back now, you could assume we've knocked off um, well over 45 degrees from down from the early 80s down to the, the mid 30s. Clearly it makes a difference if you put a large heat sink on your Pi and fit a fan on top of it, although clearly we start to use a lot of power and it gets much bigger. But as I'm sure you're now saying, can we make this even better? Okay, as we head into more bonkers cooling territory, I've now got the Pi mounted on this little box for reasons which become apparent in a second. It's mounted on a baseboard as well. And this is because some people after the last video said, why don't you blow air across the fan rather than actually down onto it? So I thought I'd try that using uh, this thing. This is a very large, or at least an 80 millimeter Zalman fan. This is a very, very powerful fan, massive airflow from this fan. And what I'm gonna do is to mount it somewhere like about there. So it's going to blow, the airflow is going to come out of here and it's going to get maximum airflow, not from the centre of the fan, obviously from the slightly higher up, and that's going to hit the, uh, the heat sink there. So I'll just get that secured in place. This is not a permanent setup. Obviously this is simply a few bits of blue tack and bits of plastic and something that might actually uh, work, but we get that in like that. That would give us the uh, setup. This again is powered uh, externally to the Pi in, in this experiment through to a Molex connector there, back into my adapter over here somewhere. If you can just see that over there, you've seen a Molex before, I'm sure. And if we power that thing on, again, pressing things, it's like I've turned on a smaller vacuum cleaner. That's gonna give us an enormous amount of airflow over the Pi, so let's see how that works in a test. Right, here we are with our uh, bonkers fan solution on the uh, large heat sink. If you put a bit of paper in here, you can see the airflow from this fan is quite considerable. That really is blowing a lot of air across the pipe. So uh, let's nip back to Raspbian and run a test on this uh, bonkers cooling solution. And there we are, we're managing to start with a temperature of 28.4. I wonder how this will manage over its 10 minutes. And there we are. We've proved if you put a very large, very noisy fan on your Pi with a very large heatsink, you can shave a few more degrees off the temperature. If we compare this to the small fan results, yes, it's better to be honest. We're very much here now into the law of diminishing returns for our efforts. Just in case you're wondering, the ambient in the room today is 21.3. So we're adding, you know, about 12 degrees just to the temperature by running the Pi at absolute maximum, which really is a very good result. It really makes you wonder how much better this result could get. After four videos and lots of temperature tests, part of me thinks that my Raspberry Pi 3 cooling experiments should now come to an end and I should move on to overclocking. This said, I've now figured out how I could interface this Zalman flower cooler to a Raspberry Pi 3, and it would therefore be a shame not to do this in some future video. But now that's it for this time, and I hope to talk to you again.
Stay listen. Uh-oh.